and welcome to The Rocks Cry Out. I'm Indiana Joe, and today we have come down to Aberivy Bay near St David's in South West Wales. And we've come here today to see what the rocks can actually tell us about the Bible. Because you see, in the Bible, it tells us in Matthew 22 to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. So God wants us to think. And if you think about things, they tend to make a lot of sense. But why are we standing here in these ruins? Well, if you think about it, if you're going to build a house out of stone, you want those stones to come from as nearby as possible, not very far away. So all of these stones in these ruins was all quarried just round the corner, the same rocks that you find down on the beach. And on those rocks on the beach, you find lots of fossils. And you find those very same fossils here in the rocks in these ruins. And we've got ourselves a little fossil in the rock just down here. It's a little coral fossil. There are many of them all around here. What actually is a fossil? Well, the word literally means in a hole. It needs to be dug up. And that's exactly what happened here. This rock was dug up in the quarry just around the corner. What's the technical term for a fossil? Well, it's an organism, a creature that was alive in the past and has got caught up, buried and preserved in the rock. And the most important thing we can tell about this fossil is that it is dead. It might seem quite obvious, but it's very, very important, particularly when you consider the Bible's history of death. But we'll come back to that later. For now, let's head down to the beach and go and dig ourselves up some fossils. These are Raptolites. Now, we don't know a lot about them because they're extinct, they're not alive anymore. But what we do know is that they were small floating corals in warm tropical areas. But remember the point that I made earlier. What is the one thing we know about these fossils? They're dead. It's quite simple, but it's very important because remember the Bible's history. According to the Bible's timeline, at what point did death enter the world? And you find that in the Bible, it clearly states that death only came about after Adam sinned. Therefore, these fossils, according to the Bible's logic, had to be formed after man was on the planet, after Adam sinned. And that puts you at conflict with most of secular science, because they teach that these creatures were alive a long time before man came onto the planet, almost 500 million years before man came onto the planet. But what actual evidence is there for that? What evidence is there for the millions of years? And where did the idea come from in the first place? So we've been walking along here collecting these fossils. Um, there are literally hundreds of these Graptolite fossils all around. You just have to go and pick them up. They're also known as tuning fork Graptolites because of their shape. It's quite an inventive name. But what rock are these fossils in? And what is this rock all around us? Well, it's actually known as Ordovician limestone. And as soon as you start saying words like Ordovician and Jurassic and Devonian, you instantly think of millions of years and evolution when in reality, the name has got nothing to do with it. So where did the name actually come from? Well, we are in Wales. And in the Celtic times in Wales, there were groups of people, tribes of people. And one of the tribes in the area was known as the Ordovici tribe. And they're not actually alive anymore. That tribe is extinct. And you remember the one thing I said about the Graptolite fossils is that they too are extinct. So when they discovered the Graptolite fossils here, they simply named them after the group of extinct people that used to live here, the Ordovici tribe, hence making these rocks the Ordovician rocks. Nothing to do with millions of years, nothing to do with evolution, but everything to do with where you find them. So where did the idea of millions of years actually come from? Was it from years of rigorous scientific research? Well, not quite. You see, for years, geologists had believed in the Bible's version of events, that Noah's flood had covered the world, creating most of the geology we see around us. But this changed with two very important people. The first one was James Hutton. He was from Scotland, and he introduced a principle which became known as uniformitarianism. 
His catchphrase was the present is the key to the past. In other words, everything that we see around us happening today explains all of geology. So if you see slow erosion from the tides, that means that all throughout history, slow erosion happened. If we see slow deposition from lakes and rivers, that means throughout all of history, the rocks had been laid down very, very slowly. It never really took off until our second person came onto the scene. Just over 200 years ago, Charles Lyell really popularised the idea that the Earth was extremely old, that the Earth was millions of years old. In fact, it was him who taught Charles Darwin, and it was Charles Darwin who was able to use Charles Lyell's ideas and influences to come up with and promote the theory of evolution. They are both connected, millions of years and evolution. But what was Charles Lyell's point? Why did he promote it? Why did he believe that the Earth was millions of years old? Why was he so popular? Was it because of rigorous research? Not quite. Unfortunately for him, his sister published some letters that he wrote after he died. And in there, he said that my only aim is, quote unquote, to free the science from Moses. What did Moses write? The first five books of the Bible. In there you have the creation, the fall of mankind, the flood, the Tower of Babel, and the law of God. Get rid of a young earth, get rid of God creating, introduce millions of years in a very old earth, and all of a sudden, you have no need for a God anymore. You have no need for a creator, you have no such thing as sin, and you have no such thing as a judging, lawful God. That was the real reason behind the millions of years. That's where it was introduced, and it's been caught on and carried on ever since. But is there actually evidence for millions of years? Surely scientists wouldn't just believe it now. What evidence can we see? Is there any evidence around here? Or is there evidence that its huge time gaps are missing? Let's find out. So behind me, you can see a really interesting phenomena. To this side of me, you can see the dark black slates, the shales. Now, these are Ordovician. Remember from what we said earlier, Ordovician was named after the extinct tribe of people that used to live here, just like the extinct fossils. But to this side of me, you can see the brown and grey rocks. These are Precambrian. Now, the really important point is the dates which have been assigned to these rocks according to evolutionary and secular timelines. The Ordovician is supposed to be about 500 million years old. The Precambrian is supposed to be almost 1 billion years old, 1,000 million. Do you see a problem? There is a huge time gap there, nearly 500 million years between the Precambrian and the Ordovician. It's enormous, but there's not a physical gap, not a huge space. These rocks are touching each other. They were laid down at the same time. It's a huge problem. This enormous amount of missing time and it's particularly important when you consider the Earth's history as a whole because nowhere on the planet can you see the complete evolutionary secular timeline of rocks. You have to mix and match from all over the planet, putting bits in here and there to make your complete sequence. It's a big problem which has been recognised by several geologists but never sufficiently solved. And the reason is simple. The millions of years simply doesn't exist. It's no evidence for it. There's nowhere on the Earth you can see it all in one place. There are huge time gaps, huge chunks missing from Earth's enormous history. The millions of years doesn't make sense. There is no evidence for it. So what have we learned here today at Aberidi Bay? Well, we've certainly had a lot of fun finding fossils and there are plenty lying about for you to go and pick up and collect. But there's one thing that we haven't discussed. How do you actually get a fossil? Because there are plenty about here, well, you see, it all comes down to a process, and it must be the right one. You see, if you want to make a fossil, you have to bury your fossil quickly, you have to bury your fossil very deeply, and you have to bury your fossil without the presence of oxygen. If you don't have those three things, or if you bury it slowly, you will never get a fossil. Because, you see, if you bury your fossil very slowly, or bury your creature very slowly, you will have your creature destroyed long before it has a chance to become a fossil. In other words, it's got nothing to do with time, but everything to do with process. It's really very important to understand. We've also discovered that here at Aberythi Bay, it is missing nearly 500 million years of supposed time. Time that simply doesn't exist. The rocks are touching each other. There's no space for that amount of time. There's no need for that amount of time. 
And remember, these fossils were laid down quickly. These fossils were laid down in the same time as those rocks, and they had to be done very quickly. It's all about a process, remember. And remember my point from earlier. According to the Bible's timeline of history, these fossils had to be laid down after Adam sinned. The Bible simply doesn't allow for that huge, vast period of time to fit into the Bible, certainly not after mankind was on it. So what's a better explanation of how these fossils got here? Well, you see, I've dug these fossils up before, but not in this Wilds. I dug them up in a different Wilds. In fact, it was New South Wales in Australia. They were exactly the same fossils, exactly the same rocks, exactly identical to this place. You wouldn't know the difference from the rocks or the fossils. The same fossils here in Aberythi in Wales are the same fossils in Castlemaine in New South Wales. They extend over the world. It's a huge deposit. They were all laid down quickly because the fossils have to be laid down quickly. They were all laid down by water because these fossils are from the water and they've been laid down across the world. This is starting to sound a lot like a worldwide flood. In fact, a worldwide flood explains it much better than the millions of years, particularly when there's no evidence for them. They've been mashed together from all different places all over the planet. There's no direct place where you can see all of those layers in one area. They're constantly missing huge amounts of time, just like we see here, nearly 500 million years of supposed time. If you want to find out more about the research and work we've been doing in places like this around the world, go to www.creationresearch.net. Make sure you get the accompanying booklet to this presentation so you too can come down and find your own fossils here at Aberythi Bay. Until next time, I'm Indiana Joe. Goodbye, God bless and happy hunting.